Good evening, everyone. Random Canuck here. Okay, so first off, uh, with me working a new full-time job, videos are going to be a little bit harder to do. Um, I still get every second weekend off, uh, but during the week I might only have one day off. Uh, so my videos are going to be not so frequent, um, but I will try and get content up for you guys as much as possible. It's just not going to be as frequent as it's been the past six, seven months when I wasn't working and had the summer off and everything like that. But once I get a really good work schedule, uh, rhythm going, um, I'll be able to do videos on weekends and days off and that kind of thing. So without any more delay, uh, yesterday was the WHL uh, trade deadline day. And right off the bat, Connor Bedard did not get traded. Uh, my thoughts on that are, I, I think Regina missed a golden opportunity. Uh, I think they should have traded him. Um, I think they should have gotten whatever they could for him. Uh, but on the other hand, he had no movement clause. Uh, I've never heard those before in junior hockey, especially the WHL. Uh, if there are people watching this video that know about it, uh, like the previous uh, no movement clause in the WHL, please feel free to let me know. I have not seen them. Uh, the other point is, and I did not know this, and I don't know how true this is. Again, if somebody knows this, please put it in the comments um, politely as possible. Um, Connor Bedard, when he signed with Regina, apparently Regina moved his parents out there. I don't know if he's with the Billet family or not. He may be. Uh, but he also might just have his parents in Regina, so he's not totally homesick, which I completely understand. It's a 17-year-old boy, not a, you know, 40-year-old NHL player or a, you know, a 28-year-old NHL player. So I can understand why he wouldn't get traded. His best friend is his line mate. Uh, he, go, he went to school there, so there's probably other people he knows. So I quite get it, but again, on the hockey side of it I really think Regina should have just said okay we're not good enough to be competitive in the playoffs and go on a long run they should have went to them and said hey Connor would you accept a trade to either the Vancouver Giants the Kamloops Blazers even the Saskatoon Blades who are playoff bound even though they're, they wouldn't have to move very far uh, you know Saskatchewan or, or Saskatoon or Moose Jaw even but they didn't do it, and I really do think the the Regina Pats have some have some tough years coming. I can kind of see them being like the Oil Kings this season, where they just drop dead. And I really hope, for Bedard's sake, that he makes the, him and the Regina Pats make the playoffs. But I gotta tell you, it's gonna be really close. And even if they do make it, I don't expect them to go that far. So. I wish it was going to happen. I really do for Bedard uh, and for the WHL because they really would have got a lot of news talking about their trade deadline. Uh, I'm wearing a Prince Albert Raiders jersey because they were fairly busy. And I'm also wearing a Vancouver Giants hat because that's what I picked. I kind of wanted to support one conference and another. So before we get to the WHL trades, I just want to say also that the Kingston Frontenacs the other day on Monday traded uh, Shane Wright to the Windsor Spitfires. So Windsor got Shane Wright uh, and a conditional 14th round pick in 2025. So the OHL has a, has a uh, bigger draft than, than I believe the WHL. Uh, the Kingston Frontenacs receive forward Ethan Medi or Medi Medmia. I'm sorry. And I know I got a comment about butchering people's names. Look, I'm sorry. I, I'm trying my best here. Uh, I, I'm sure there's, you know, it's not perfect, but I'm trying my best. Uh, Kingston also got Gavin McCarty, a second round pick in 2023, which was originally Ottawa's. A third round pick in 2023, which is originally uh, Sioux St. Marie Greyhounds. And they got three first round pick or three draft picks formerly of the Niagara Ice Dogs which is a fourth round pick in 2024 a sixth round pick in 2024 and a fourth round pick in a 2025 Kingston also got a conditional fifth round pick in 2024 which is originally the Hamilton Bulldogs pick 
and a conditional sixth round pick in 2025, which was the Erie Otters. So that's a very good haul for the Kingston Frontenacs for Shane Wright. And I think if Regina would have traded Bedard, they would have even got even more than that. So, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's tough for Kingston, but that's what happens. Anyways, moving on to the WHL. Starting off with the first deal. Uh, now, this was not on trade deadline day. I believe this was the day before. Uh, the Tri-City Americans make a deal with the Edmonton Oil Kings as they acquire Ethan Peters, a defenseman, 2003, from Edmonton for a second-round pick in 2025. Ethan Peters, um, I believe, might be one of the last remaining players on the WHO 2022 roster that won the championship last year. Yeah, it's just, it just hasn't been good for Edmonton, so that's not surprising. Uh, then, Chaz Lucius goes from the Manitoba Moose of the AHL to the Portland Winterhawks of the WHL. So, Portland bolsters up and gets uh, Chaz Lucas, or Lucius, and, oh, they're going to be dangerous and fun to watch. Then, Brad Lambert goes from the Manitoba Moose, because both players are Winnipeg Jets uh, draft picks. He goes from the Manitoba Moose to the Seattle Thunderbirds. So, yep, let's give the Seattle Thunderbirds more ammunition because they really need that. Um, this is huge for Seattle, and they weren't done there yet. Then, finally, we get the first trade of the actual deadline. The Brandon Wheat Kings acquire Dawson Pasternak for a fourth round and a fourth round pick in 2023, which is conditional from the Portland Winterhawks from Colin Frank. Uh, forward 2006, a second round pick in 2026, and a conditional, or no, sorry, a sixth round pick in 2025. The conditional pick was the fourth rounder going to the Brandon Wheat Kings. Brandon, a very busy team uh, yesterday at the deadline, and so was Portland. Um, again, second trade of the day, the Brandon Wheat Kings acquired Nolan uh, Flamond, uh, forward 2004, the, from the Kelowna Rockets in exchange, uh, the Kelowna Rockets get Trey Johnson, a 2005 forward, a third-round pick in 2023, and a fifth-round pick in 2024. Kelowna pretty much waving the white flag um, and pretty much giving up on this season, uh, which I understand they're kind of like Regina. They were kind of the Regina Pats of the West. They were kind of the playoff bubble. They fell quite a bit. And they probably just cut their losses and said, you know, that's that's that. And we get back to the Brandon Wheat Kings loading up on offense. Um, or excuse me, it's the go or kind of subtracting, really. Um, I don't really understand this trade from the from the Brandon Wheat Kings at all. But they traded uh, Jake Chase on to the Saskatoon Blades. Now, when this before this trade came out. Yeah, uh, the the Saskatoon Blade said we have a trade to announce at eleven thirty, which is ten thirty my time. I thought, oh my god, maybe they got Bedard, but it was Jake Chase on going from Brandon to Saskatoon. Saskatoon gets uh Jake Chase on, sorry, and the Brandon Wheat Kings acquire a first round pick in twenty twenty three, so they get Saskatoon's first round pick in this year's WHL draft, which will probably be a little closer to the bottom of the first round. They also get a second round pick in 2025 and a second round uh, pick in 2026, which is conditional. I like this trade for Saskatoon. They load up. They got to keep up to speed with Winnipeg and Red Deer. Um, I, I like this trade for Saskatoon. Very surprised Brandon did that. Then we get the Everett Silver Tips uh, acquiring Donovan uh, Bodner, a goalie, 2005 for a sixth round pick and a sixth round pick, which is conditional, 2024. From the Port, uh, uh, goes to the Portland Winterhawks, uh, a fourth round pick in 2024. So Portland trades a goalie to Everett, and they trade a couple of draft picks each as well, or a draft pick each as well. Um, Lethbridge acquires goalie uh, Jared Picklick. I'm sh hopefully I pronounced that right. Uh, and the Tri-City Americans acquire a 10th round pick in 2025. So there we go. At least we know the WHL draft is at least 10 rounds. It might be 12. Could be wrong. Um, again, Portland Winterhawks very busy, this time with the Red Deer Rebels, as the Red Deer Rebels acquire Nick Andersruck, or, and, or Andrusik. I'm sorry, uh, defenseman 2004. Uh, Portland gets a 7th round pick in 2024. 
I, I like that trade for Red Deer. Uh, Kelowna uh, acquires Landon Cowper, defenseman, 2006, from the Prince Albert Raiders for a conditional 2025 fifth-round pick. Uh, Kamloops acquires Dylan Weagle, a defenseman, 2003, from the Swift Current Broncos for a ninth-round pick in 2026. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about each trade because there's a lot to talk about. Uh, and plus the dread deadline was yesterday and pretty much everybody who's a WHL fan kind of knows what happened. Uh, the Vancouver Giants, uh, Ben Feenan, uh, is acquired by the Giants from the Tri-City Americans as the Americans acquire a seventh round pick in 2026. Now, here's a bigger trade. We're getting to some bigger trades as, uh, as we go on here. This one kind of caught me off guard. Um... Prince George did make a deal yesterday, but it was not for who I thought. Uh, as they acquire Zach Funk, a 2003 Ford from the Calgary Hitmen. Very surprised Calgary would get rid of Zach Funk. He is a very spark plug of a player. Lots of great energy, enthusiasm from what I read. But I understand why Calgary did this. So Calgary gets Carter McAdams, a forward, 2004 Ford, so a 19-year-old, I believe. A second round pick in 2023, a second round pick in 2024, and a fourth round pick in 2024. That's setting yourself up pretty good for the future, considering Calgary's doing better than I thought they'd be this year. Uh, so I really like this trade for the Calgary Hitmen. Uh, yes, it cost them Zach Funk, but you know what? I really like the Calgary Hitmen's future. I, I really do. Um, then Ozzy Weisblatt, who is playing for the San Jose Sharks farm team, is traded from the Prince Albert Raiders to the Portland Winterhawks for a first-round pick in 2025, which is conditional, a second-round pick in 2026, which is conditional. Oh, it's two second-round picks in 2026, and they're both conditional. So Ozzy Weisblatt is playing for the San Jose Sharks farm team, the San Jose Barracuda. So should he get uh, brought back to junior, he has to go to the Portland Winterhawks. I don't know if Portland makes this deal if they didn't know he was coming back. I, I find that interesting because you give up a first round pick, a second two second round picks. I mean, I know they're not till 2025 and 2026, but by that time, Portland maybe needs those. And now Prince Albert has them. So I, I like this deal for Prince Albert. I really do. Now, here is the big trade that did happen uh, yesterday, and it involves the Oil Kings and, of course, the Seattle Thunderbirds. So the Seattle Thunderbirds acquired Dylan Gunther from the Edmonton Oil Kings, his rights. Now, Dylan Gunther is playing with the Arizona Coyotes, and I don't know if Seattle makes this deal unless they know for sure that Dylan Gunther is going to come to them. It's just like the Aussie Weisblatt trade. So it's Dylan Gunther... And Jordan Ramsey, a 2007 forward, and an eighth-round pick going to Seattle. Coming to Edmonton is forward, 2007 forward. I know I'm going to butcher this. Kojai Gibson, a first-round pick in 2026, which is conditional. A third-round, or excuse me, a second-round pick in 2023. A fourth-round pick in 2024. Now, the second-round pick in 2023 is conditional. These following picks are not... Oh, no, there are. Uh, a 2024 fourth-round pick, a conditional fourth-round pick in 2025, a conditional fourth-round pick in 2026, a fifth-round pick 2025, which is conditional, and a sixth-round pick conditional in 2024. So should Dylan Gunther be brought back to the juniors of the WHL? He will go to the Seattle Thunderbirds, and I have to think Seattle would not have done this without talking to Arizona first. Dylan Gunther did not get a chance to play in the Memorial Cup last year. He got injured with the Oil Kings. Seattle can pretty have a really, really good chance of going to the Memorial Cup this year in Kamloops. I think Dylan Gunther finds a way to join his former Oil Kings teammate Luke Brokop on the Seattle Thunderbirds and go on a hell of a run. So I like this trade for both teams. It is a little more risky, obviously, for Seattle, but that's why there's conditional picks. I don't know exactly what the conditions are. 
it's probably if Gunther goes to Seattle and plays this many games or he plays this many games in the playoffs or if he wins a Memorial Cup. So it's only a first-round pick conditional in 2026, so that's three years down the road, so we, we will see. But, man, Seattle is deadly. And then finally, the last trade of the day was involving the Regina Pats, but they acquire Steel Queering forward 2003 from the Everett Silver Tips for a fourth round pick. So, gotta say, if that's all Regina can do to get themselves into the playoffs and help Bedard, I I gotta say I'm I'm not impressed by that at all. Uh, quite frankly, I think that's terrible. Um, if I'm Connor Bedard and his agent, I would be very upset with GM John Paddock of the Regina Pats. And I got to say, come the end of the season, if Regina does not make the playoffs or they don't get out of the first round or second round, to be quite frank, I think even if they make the playoffs in a sixth or eighth, seventh or eighth seed, maybe even sixth, depending on who's in third, I don't think they're getting out of the first round at all. I really don't. So don't be surprised when I don't pick Regina to get out of the first round. I just, yeah, I, I just really think they dropped the ball there, and I think they should have traded them, and, but that's that. But that's the last we're going to talk about Connor Bedard being traded because the next time we talk about Connor Bedard, it's going to be at the NHL draft. So, you know, I, I hope for his sake Regina makes the playoffs. I really do, but... I don't know. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. This has been the Random Canuck. And we'll see what happens here in the second half of the uh, WHL season. It is going to be very, very interesting. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens. And I will be doing playoff predictions and previews for that and a season wrap-up when uh, everything's all said and done, when the Hedge and Health Cup is handed over to the team captain of the uh, whoever wins it. Anyways, thanks for watching. This has been the Random Connect. We'll talk to you guys later. Bye for now.